Welcome back to the Corporate Finance Academy. Today we are going to go through scenario analysis. Okay, so what are we going to talk about? We're going to go through what exactly is scenario analysis, why and when you might use it. We're going to talk about the difference between scenario analysis and sensitivity analysis. And then we're going to go through a couple examples of how you might use. Then we're going to go through a couple examples of how you actually use this and how you do it in Excel. So the basics. Scenario analysis really is taking a number of inputs into a model and evaluating different sets of those assumptions to see what their impact will be. And, you know, in finance and accounting, like I mentioned, typically we're talking about financial models. So why and when you might use it? There really is almost an unlimited potential for use for scenario analysis. You can use it in your financial planning in your business. You could use it when you're signing a deal. You can use it for many, many different things. Um, a couple things that you'll think about using it for are pricing, evaluating risk, or the scope of outcomes. You know, when you think about, let's say you say you were involved in real estate and you were looking at whether or not to buy a property, you want to have all these different factors, whether it's how much maintenance costs, how much you're able to rent individual office space or, or units for, um, what your interest rate you're going to get on the property, all of these different things, and you'll play with them to say, if these sets of assumptions happen, here's what the outcome is. Buying machinery, hiring decisions, many, many more. And again, ultimately what you're trying to understand is, what's your risk? So if you have these things happen, which would all be favorable, what would your investment look like or what would your deal look like? And if you had everything go unfavorable, what's kind of your downside? So one huge application of scenario analysis is looking at kind of best case, base case, and worst case. So you form a band around what the, the realm of possibility is. Uh, you will often hear scenario and sensitivity analysis used interchangeably, and that's okay. It's not that big of a deal, but technically scenario analysis is when you're changing multiple variables and it's usually when you're doing like a base case uh, upside case and downside case where you're looking at these different potential outcomes with a, a mix of factors versus sensitivity analysis which is typically where you have just one variable changes so this is where you might have something that you're looking at and you say well, if I have a 1% change in my rent, what happens to everything else? Or if I have a 1% change in my expenses, what happens to everything else? That's more of a sensitivity analysis. But with that, let's jump right into our model. Okay, so let's look at a first example. And what we're gonna do here is a simple income statement. So we're gonna say, okay, we have, we're selling some quantity of an item, we're gonna have a, the price per unit that we're gonna sell it at, which here we're gonna say is $85. We're gonna have a cost per unit, which let's say that's 18 for now. And let's say just high level, your SG&A costs, which are $550,000 per year. So let's take that and generate a simple income statement. So we're gonna have revenue, cost of goods sold, gross margin, SG&A cost, and operating income. Okay, so in this example, your revenue is going to be your quantity sold times your price per unit. Your cost of goods sold is gonna be your cost per unit times your quantity sold. Your gross margin will be the difference of those two. Add in your SG&A cost and your Operating income will be your gross margin, that's your SG&A cost. That's gonna say you made $254,000. What do we want to be able to look at here? Let's say we wanna make a little table so we can understand based on changes in price and quantity, what would, so what we wanna do now is do some scenario analysis. 
So we've got these assumptions and we're going to focus on the quantity sold and the price per unit. We're going to say that those two are the two elements that we want to focus in on here. So we're going to label these two axes. What does that look like for us? So quantity, let's scroll over a couple in our quantity sold. Let's say that's 12,000. That's our base case. So we're going to use this as the middle here. But we're going to say, what if that goes to uh, 15,000? And what if it goes to 18,000? And then similarly, let's say it goes down to 9,000 or 7,500. And then for price, uh, what's our base case here? $85. So let's say 82.50 or 80, and it can go up to 87.50 or 90. So now if we want to see what our operating profit is based on that, here at the intersection, we actually want to make this equal this operating profit. And then we're going to highlight this whole table and we're going to go up here to data, what if analysis, data table, and the row input for us is going to be the quantity and the column input is going to be our price. You hit OK and you wait for it to come in and bingo, you can see, and I'll highlight the middle here, this is kind of our base case here, but if our quantity went up to, let's say 15,000 at the same price, you actually jump all the way to 455,000 of op operating income. On the flip side, if you went down to 7,500, you're down to a loss. And you can see how based on price going up, you make more money, price going down, you make less money, and as quantity goes up, you make more. So this is just, it gives you an idea of, hey, if my target is at 454, we need to get to 375,000, you can look in here and say, well, what do I need to do to get to that number? So this is one example. So let's build on this example a little bit. Let's take this, I'm gonna copy and paste it down even though we're gonna change a number of things in it. But let's just say you've got a company who you know, a lot of companies felt this through the COVID-19 pandemic where they couldn't be open or business dropped or business shifted and their business changed. So let's take a business and let's build on this a little bit. So let's drop, let's drop two new assumptions in here. We're going to shift these cells down. So we're going to say COVID-19 reduction, we're going to call it. And let's just peg that at 35%. So we're saying the business went down 35%. And that's going to give us an adjusted quantity sold times one minus this adjustment. And it gives you 7,800 units sold. Now we have to update real quick our revenue. Our costs are both going to be now based off that adjusted. And this puts you in a loss position. So instead of looking at what we did last time, we're going to keep this quantity sold. We're going to have revenue here and operating income. And we're going to get rid of those. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, we're going to have these different scenarios to say our business changed by these percentages. So we're going to say start at 20 percent we're going to add five percent each step of the way this is now we're still going to be looking for operating income which is good the quantity sold the same quantity sold our revenue is the same and our operating income is the base case and now what we're going to do we're going to delete all this we'll get rid of it and now same type of function here. We're going to highlight this table. We're going to go, actually let's go all the way down here. Let's take this down to 60%. So we're going to take this table and we're going to go to data, what if analysis, data table, and now we're not going to change any of, we're just going to have our column, which is this column linked to COVID-19 reduction. And here we go. Now we've got these sensitivities. So if you look, we said 35% reduction. We give us 7,800 sold in 2740. 
That's kind of our base case, which is the same as up here. And then what you see is if you change that drop, what happens to your revenue and your operating income? So you can see if that was instead of 35%, 50%, you'd lose 148,000. So this gives you a nice table to compare what happens based on your different COVID sensitivities. So we're gonna go through one more example, and this one's a little bit different. Let's say that we're looking at buying an asset, buying a machine that can give us more units of output for our company. So let's start off and say, what is the cost of the machine? And let's say it's $945,000. Then we're gonna, we need to know how many units of output this new machine is gonna generate. We'll say 18,500. The cost per unit, which is $5.95, and our price per unit. So what are we selling it for to the end customer? We'll say that's $15.50. So if you think about your cash flows, you're going to have an initial investment, initial cost, which is a negative cash flow for nine, of $945,000. We're going to say that this is a cash account of business. So our revenue is going to be simply our units of output times our price. And this is a simple example. So we're going to say that's the same each year. You could build it in to have a different one each year, but we're just keeping this simple. Our cost is again going to be those units of output times your negative cost per unit. So that gives you $110,000 negative per month. And again, we're going to keep that simple and flat across the example. And now that you have all of those, you can get your net cash flow. So you simply sum those out to get your net cash flow. And now what you see when you look at your NPV is, and we'll use a 10% rate just to keep it simple, across your net cash flows, you have an NPV, you have a positive $1,000. So you say that this is a project that could be worth undertaking. It's not a great project, but it is better than your hurdle rate. And your IRR, take these cash flows, this is probably in the neighborhood of 10%, comes out and it's actually 10%. So that's your base case. Now here's where scenario analysis comes in handy. Let's take that same thing, let's copy it down, and let's say we can get that machine for 900,000. And we think, it's, we still think it's 18,500 units, but we think we might be able to get that cost down to 525. And we talk to our sales team, we think they could sell it for 16. Now, all of a sudden, you went from this example where you are only going to have a $1,000 NPV to $150,000 NPV at an 18% IRR. So all of a sudden, this looks like a much better use of cash. And we can change this to our upside case. But then on the flip side, let's say you have a downside case. And it's back up at the higher amount. Your output's the same, but your cost actually goes to 625, and your sales goes back down to 1550. You now say your downside case, if you're really confident in these numbers and you look at it, you look at this and you say, well, my downside case, worst case, is just under my hurdle rate. Your 9% IRR versus your 10% hurdle rate, your NPV is $25,000 negative, when I look at this, I think, well, if I can motivate my team to get to this upside case, I don't have much downside risk. Even in a worst case, I still get 9% IRR. That's the worst case. And your upside case could give you this asset, which is 18% IRR, $150,000 NPV. And you say, look, with these bands of 9 to 18%, with your base at 10%, you probably feel pretty good about this investment. That is it for the scenario analysis. It is a great tool. These were simple examples, but you can use them in a full annual operating plan if you're doing a real estate model because you're buying a house or you are becoming a landlord or hundreds of other applications. Use this. Use this to understand what your risks could be, what your upside could be. I hope this is helpful. Please subscribe. Please like or dislike the video. And if you have questions, leave them in the comments. We'll try to get to them. Thank you and good luck. Check out our channel for many more videos.